So our next technology, presented by Tolga Itag, has also been in development for the last couple of years and is one that will be ready for licensing, I think we're saying sometime in January time frame. Is that correct? Thank you, Mike. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Tolga Aytu. Let me get this one. My name is Tolga Aytu. I am from Chemical Sciences uh, Division. Uh, today I would like to introduce our newest and most advanced technology platform on the creation of nanotextured, optically transparent, durable super hydrophobic coatings. And our commercialization manager is Alex Detrana. So first of all, talking about super hydrophobicity, I would like to give you a brief description of the uh, Vedic properties of a solid surface. So Vedic properties of a sur solid surface is, in a nutshell is defined by this uh, angle that is formed by any liquid that could be water or anything else uh, at the solid surface at this three-phase boundary. And the value of this angle basically dictates whether the surface is hydrophilic, hydrophobic, or super hydrophobic. And if the value of this contact angle is greater than 150 degrees C, basically we call that surface super hydrophobic. What that mean, means is, as you all know probably, that the surface uh, water or any uh, water basically in this case is repelled easily from the surface. But however, uh, if the surface, if this surface is flat, you, can, you will never obtain super hydrophobic properties, no matter what you do that surface. So for a super hydrophobic property, you have to rely on underlying surface features. And ideally, a combination of nano and micro scale surface features creates the most extreme water repelling properties. And this is actually first observed in nature by plants or insects. And a common example is, a, is lotus leaf, is a textbook example. Basically, the water repellency on the lotus leaf is enabled by these micro-size embedded with nano-size surface features that are covered with a low surface energy waxy material. So inspired from these biological surfaces, many others, by using many different technologies, created artificial super hydrophobic surfaces. And at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, we do, we do that too. And probably many of you guys, and I know some of you guys, uh, attended these conferences, uh, Sparks events, have heard many different technologies, super hydrophobic material technologies developed in the lab successfully, and some of them are already licensed. Today, what I am presenting you, the most advanced uh, and the recent uh, material technology that we have developed uh, on, over the course of one and a half years, which can address the two important marketplace demands of durability and optical transparency. In fact, when we talk about this technology, or about this opportunity with industry leaders, their initial inquiry is always concentrated on durability first, second, optical transparency. So our technology is based on nanotextured thin film coatings, and now we are in a position to address these two important demands for all these and many more applications out there. So talking about applications, let me give you some of the market opportunities for this type of a coating. Uh, in terms of float glass, you can apply these coatings into anything that you see is transparent. In terms of float glass, it's a 60 billion market with a 5% CAGR, and here are the individual segments, subsets of under this float glass that these, can, these coatings can be applied to. In the optical coatings market, it's an 8 billion market, and you will see in the presentation that our coatings inherently provide anti-reflective properties. So, anti-reflective coatings under there is a 3 billion market, and anti-reflective coatings, when I say anti-reflective, the immediate uh, application comes to is the solar cell panels. Because if we can apply these coatings with anti-reflective coatings, basically, you can increase the uh, power output of the solar device by at least 4%, which is a significant uh, value proposition. And only 5% of the solar market is penetrated with anti-reflective coatings. Everything is going at uh, touch screens, so it's a close to 14 billion market, which is expected to increase to 24 billion in 
2017. We can apply this on convex, concave chases. Uh, in terms of optical lens market, it's an 8 billion market. It's expected to increase to 12 billion by 2016 with 8.4% CAGR. And you will see that these coatings, since they are superidophobic, they inherently provide self-cleaning properties. So when we are talking about self-cleaning market, that's a 0.8 billion market currently, and expected to increase 2.3 billion by 2015. And because these are self-cleaning, you will not be uh, uh, requiring any chemical agents to clean your glass surfaces. And that will uh, create another 0.1 billion annually. Uh, in this, in this uh, view graph, I would like to show you some of the competitive differentiation of some of the products out there. And in this table, I have compared all these products with respect to the uh, the, uh, with respect to the, uh, with respect to some of the properties that they provide. Okay, uh, if you look at this table, none of these technologies can provide, uh, a combination of super hydrophobicity, durability, and transparency. Of course, you can see that, uh, some of them are super hydrophobic, some of them are not. Almost none of them are durable except this self-cleaning Pilkington active glass material, and, uh, but that is not a super hydrophobic material that is based on a catalysis, uh, catalyt catalytic activity. Uh, some of them are transparent and some of them are not. A all of them are scalable because they are in the market. But look at these two columns. None of them can be engineered to provide anti-reflective and UV blocking functionalities. And what we are proposing to the marketplace uh, is an, I call it an, an in uh, all-in-one coding that can provide all these functionalities under the same roof. And our designed codings will outperform any of these competing technologies at a fraction of the material cost. So how we get to do those codings? Here, obviously, I'm talking about a novel process that can deliver tailored codings according to uh, specific functionality. Uh, according to the specific functionality. And in order to do these coatings, we've, uh, the, in the first step, we fabricate thin film glass coatings using an industry uh, process onto a uh, transparent material. Then we convert these co uh, coatings or transform these coatings into nanostructured surfaces. So in the first step, we start with a phase separating specially formulated glass target. Follow, uh, this follows by the deposition of this target as a thin film for on a transparent material. We use RF sputtering in this case. And you see the dot on the behind of the sub substrate. This uh, basically helps us distinguish what, what surface is coding and what surface is not coding because they are extremely transparent. So in the second step, as I mentioned, we transform these coatings into nanostructured entities. In order to do that, uh, the process uh, goes through a heat, heat treatment step, which uh, phase separates sodium borate and silica rich phases into a spinodal pattern, as seen over here. This is followed by a differential etching pro pro process, converts this structure into a nanostructure material. Now, at this point, we can stop here, and we have a beautiful nanostructure surface, provides multitude of functionalities. But if we coat this surface, or covalent bond to this surface, a low chemical surface energy material, we can convert this surface into a super hydrophobic uh, coating. So uh, next, I will give you, in the next few graphs at least, I will give you or highlight you some of the uh, uh, functionalities that we obtain on these, on these samples. Uh, first of all, our coatings are super hydrophobic. And uh, if I play this video, you can see the optical transparency and uh, and uh, water repelling behavior and optical surface. This is developed on quartz. That's how we started because it, it provided us an ideal platform, the quartz material. But we eventually wanted to expand this technology into low melting point glass materials, such as the ones that you use uh, in your homes or architectural buildings. Uh, and I basically, these are soda lime type materials. And if you look at this table, Fusilica is an ideal platform because we have the C treatment step. And uh, the annealing and softening points are rather high. But low melting point glass materials are 
respectively, much respectively lower uh, annealing and softening points. So uh, we, we uh, in the course of this uh, past year, we expanded our technology into soda line materials, and you can clearly see the be uh, beating up the water droplets on the soda line material. We also expanded th this technology into concave and convex uh, shapes. And here's a quartz lens. Uh, you are looking at a high-speed video camera where you are seeing the bouncing of the water from the lens surface. Also, we uh, expanded technology to bulk glass materials. So basically, in this case, uh, this technology is a little bit different. We don't apply a coating. Basically, we convert the whole bulk glass into a superhydrophobic entity throughout this bulk. So basically, we created bulk monolithic superhydrophobic glass materials as well. Uh, our coatings is obviously transparent. And for example, in this transmittance curve, uh, you are looking, you are, uh, in this transmittance curve, uh, ranging from near IR down to UV regimes, uh, you are, uh, the superhydrophobic coated, uh, quartz material, which is this red curve here, enables, uh, better transmittance for all angles of incidence over a broad range of wavelengths down to, uh, down to UV regime compared to the uncoated quartz material, which is this blue curve here. And from this inset, you can clearly see the UV blocking functionality of our, our coatings due to the nano uh, textured nature of the uh, coating. And all these functionalities can be tailored according to the specific needs by tailoring the microstructural properties. Uh, as I mentioned to you, our coatings provide inherent anti-reflective properties. Uh, for instance, from this reflection and absorption curve obtained on one of our uh, superhydrophobic coated quartz material, which is this blue curve, enables much lower or much reduced uh, reflectance over the entire wavelength compared to the uncoated quartz substrates. And specifically, at around 400 nanometers, the reflectance uh, decreases by approximately 3%, which is a significant ac accomplishment. Basically, with these type of coatings, the industry may not be needing any other anti-reflective coating applications, uh, uh, coatings for, for specific applications. And this is a, a very good value proposition for solar panels, actually. And visually, you can see the reduced reflectance from this image over here, where the coated glass substrate uh, shows much reduced reflection of the left fluorescent light compared to the un uncoated glass material. And we have this fantastic functionality because we have a very porous nanostructured na nature of these coatings, which provides a lower refractive index compared to the uh, uh, bulk or dense glass material that provides uh, inherent anti-reflective property. We have done uh, many durability tests, but I am going to show you only the two of them over here. Uh, basically, one of the durability is one of the durability uh, standards is whether these materials can withstand uh, environmental uh, conditions such as sandstorm or dust dust storm. So, in order to do, do, do that, we have developed a uh, uh, in-house uh, rig and. Uh, basically, what we did wa uh, here is we, uh, uh, we, by using a compressed air uh, and by inserting uh, aluminum oxide, rugged edge aluminum oxide particles, we blasted our uh, coated glass materials inside this housing. And we uh, calibrated our uh, velocities by using a hot wire anemometer. And this uh, to give you an example, this is during one of our tests done at 40 kilometers per hour. And uh, I don't know whether we are not hearing the, uh, I was hoping that you guys will hear the sound. But you, you hear the, basically, you hear the sound of the wind speed and sparkling of the aluminum oxide particles uh, in, this, uh, in this video while they are impinging on the glass surface. And basically, this is after the test. And uh, you can see that uh, the superhydrophobic properties are, uh, are, uh, are, are not degraded. The, uh, the water droplets bounce off of the surface. And you can see that uh, the, this is the double stick tape, which we use to, in order to mount these samples. The both bottom, and, bottom and the top portions of the uh, glass substrate is covered with aluminum oxide uh, particles. And this is basically, remember, I, uh, I bounce the water 
uh, in this video, let's play it again, in one portion of the glass. And this is the same glass. Basically, what, what you are seeing is the self-cleaning property of the surface, where I bounce the water off of from the surface is clean very nicely. The rest is covered with a uh, aluminum oxide dust. And if you look at the performance, before and after contact angles are identical. This test is done uh, by 50 grams of aluminum oxide particles, and they are the uh, they are the hardest materials that you found on Earth after diamond, and uh, the duration is 10 to 15 minutes. So superiority properties uh, basically maintained after an aggressive test. We have also look at the durability of these uh, uh, under high uh, temperatures. So what we did here was we take one of the samples, anneal the sample for 30 minutes at these temperature intervals up to 600 degrees. Here is the profiles of the water droplets after these successive tre treatments. And basically you can look at this uh, figure over here. Basically uh, contact angles has not changed till up to 500 degrees. But when we go to 600 degrees, basically the surface change into a hydrophilic entity. And the reason is that uh, we have uh, burned the low surface energy chemistry on the on the surface. But I, I, I believe that not many applications will be requiring temperatures above 500 degrees C. Uh, as I mentioned to you, we can tailor these coatings with respect to specific functionality. And uh, one of the functionalities that we have obtained is anti-fucking uh, property. Uh, in the left, you are looking... Uh, in the left, you are looking two, uh, two pictures. Basically, this top one uh, is showing that we have, we have a coated glass material which is, uh, which is laid on a uh, microscope slide. This is pre-fogging conditions. And this is showing after. Uh, th this whole assembly is uh, treated uh, with a specific uh, fogging sequence. And this is after, the, after that fogging sequence. Basically, you can clearly see the uh, moisture buildup or fogging buildup on the surface, and our coating state uh, optically clear. So at this point, maybe I should mention that once we make these materials, they are nanostructures, very, very uh, nanostructures and nanopores. That, pro, uh, that is basically uh, hydrophilic. That hydrophilic functionality basically creates the anti-fogging uh, attributes. If we convert the surface to a super hydrophobic below low surface chemistry, then you have the super hydrophobic functionalities. Now, treating that surface with a different chemistry, we can potentially achieve anti-fingerprinting functionalities. And let's watch this video over here. Uh, this is one of my colleagues. One side of this uh, uh, substrate is coded with our coding. The other side is not. You are looking at the uh, coded side, and uh, our colleague is applying his uh, fingerprints to the surface. And you don't see any fingerprints, basically. There is more fingerprints. And then he's going to turn the back side, and he's going to apply his back, big fat finger on the back side, and you see the big fat uh, fingerprint on the, uh, on the surface. Now, in terms of summary, uh, I didn't show you all these functionals because of the time limitation, but the unique technology features are, uh, are, are, are enormous. Basically, uh, our coatings is super hydrophobic and anti-fogging depending on the surface functionality, which I have not talked to you about and which provides many, many more applications is the omniphobic functionality of these coatings provides also by changing the surface chemistry. In all these three states, these coatings are extremely robust, transparent. They provide, no matter what, they provide anti-reflective functionality and they can be engineered to provide better anti-reflective uh, functionalities if we engineer the coatings. Uh, they, if we engineer the coating, they provide UV blocking functionalities, which may be important for, uh, for certain applications involving polymeric coatings. And at the super hydrophobic state, our coatings have the functionality of self-cleaning. And to do those coatings, we use efficient and industrially scalable processes, which in turn should enable quick integration by the industry. And these are the two, uh, uh, actually there is more, maybe I should have included more, Jennifer, that there is, there is at least three or four more applications based on this technology. Here is three of them applied, uh, which can be uh, licensed rather quickly.
and I will be happy to answer any of your questions. You are talking about tungsten. This, this is to, just to do uh, TEM uh, analysis. We have to code the surfaces for fibbing purposes. Not nothing to do with the, yeah. The, the coding basically stops over here. This is extra to do the fibbing process. That is the coded surface. The second question. We, did, we have done uh, the reflecting studies, but not to that extent. Basically, we didn't engineer the codings to provide the full entire reflection functionality. But in all, all our codings, at least we gained 3 to 4 percent. And the data that I showed you, basically this, this is an older data, which we now obtain much better anti-reflective properties on our samples by, uh, by process optimization. Yes, please. Are you aware of other uh, lab research institutions doing similar work? Uh, did I find that in this uh, Bell Laboratory in Uh, there is many, many researchers are working on super hydrophobic codings, many, not just us. But what we have developed here is unique and novel in the sense that none of these those content, uh, technologies come even close to what we have developed here. They are either sol gel based or polymer based codings which are not durable at all. Or they are powder based codings you can wipe your finger and gone. Yes, that's exactly. Uh, we have another technology based on metal oxide coatings that, that specifically targets that application, anti-corrosion, anti basically. Uh, the road surfaces is, I mean, these are uh, physical vapor deposited coatings, so you, you cannot apply those onto a road surface. It has to be powder based in that case. But we can apply our codings to high-value products or glass-based technologies. Is this coding impermeable to water vapor issue also? Uh, well, in the hydrophilic state, water vapor basically penetrates. So can it be used like That's why anti material is an alternative? Yes. Like At the super hydrophobic state, yes. That's the whole idea, yes. Because once you get the critical point, it's going to create a water droplet which is going to start rolling over from the surface. I mean, even in the gas state? In the, ga in the gas state, after you hit, uh, reach that critical state of uh, particle nucleation or water droplet nucleation. Let's take, thank you.